in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I'm telling you friends, we are not the weak and beggarly, we are not the disadvantaged, there is an ability, there is an activity of the Holy Ghost at work in you, the Bible says according to his power that worketh in you, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, according, there is an ability, there is an empowerment, it gives you audacity, it gives you courage, it gives you confidence. That you can speak and say I'm above all and have no apology for it. You can speak and say I am unlimited, not by power, not by might. I refuse to see challenges. I refuse to see limitations. I'm moving forward. I'm moving onward. My life is blessed, rising from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Because we are the victorious ones. Friends, I have one guarantee. No one who hears these words and pays this price now will become a failure in this life. I know it. It's not a prophecy. It's the truth. Hallelujah. For this is a price we are paying. The Bible says, There remained a rest unto God's people. There remained a rest. If it, um, Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 10, it said, There remained a rest. There remained a rest. And verse 12, I believe, says that let us therefore labor. There is a rest that is a gift. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a gift. But there is another rest that is a reward. It's not a gift. It said there remained a rest. The word labor in the Greek is constrain yourself to death to enter that rest. And verse 11 says that he that has entered his rest. Oh, verse 11. Okay, verse 10. Sorry now. That's the for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works. There is a Sabbath. The Bible says on the seventh day God rested. Many of us are pressing to enter our seventh day. You may not understand. Some of us are in day two. Others are in day four. Others are in day five. Hear me friends, now is not the time to give up. Because a time will come when men say there is a casting down. You will be functioning from that rest. You are paying the price now. Praying in the spirit. He said, Jerry Menet a rest. Jerry Menet a rest. This rest is a reward. You press. That's why we are praying. Many of you are coming all the way from Kaduna. Many of you are coming all the way from Gaskian very far. Many of you are to trek here. There's no money in your pocket, but you are pressing. There is a pressing. It's a pressing by faith. Laboring in the place of the world. You may not look like it. Laboring in the place of prayer. In spite of the challenges. A day will come. And the spirit of God is supervising your press. Soon he will tell you you are in day five. And then he will tell you you are in day six. The last round. Press. Hear me. There remained a rest. There remained a rest. And the 
Bible tells us that anyone that enters that rest ceases from his work. Oh, I choose to press. No matter what it will cost me, this suit will not rob me. No, the organization here will. If I will kneel down and lie down to press, I will press. If I will fast to press, I will press. If I will labor in the world to press, if I will keep myself from evil to press, I will press. One day, the door will be opened. Let me tell you, when you enter, you have entered. We live in a generation where people do not understand their partnership with the Holy Spirit for victory. So you can see it in the world, but then you will not press. Paul speaking said, God desired this rest even for the Israelites. But because of unbelief, they couldn't enter this rest. He said, today if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as he did, as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. They hardened their hearts. And he swore in his wrath, saying, they shall not enter my rest. He said, but like them, today we are hearing the word. He said, they heard the word just like we did. But they, the word did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. So friends, don't think you are doing anybody a favor by coming for koinonia. Every time the devil tells you, why are you just a church folks always with God? Tell him I'm pressing. There is a press in the spirit. I may not eat food now. I will take the gari brain in tongues and keep pressing. For I know a day will come. I will not bow to Baal. I will not compromise God's standard. Remember our teaching on the kingdom. Satan will tell you bow and I will give you the keys. God will say hold on. Endure. He that endures to the end shall receive a crown. There is a crown that he gives those who press. And that's what we are here to do. Hallelujah. God bless you, be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's continue our series. We've been teaching on the kingdom. For those of you who are just coming today, catching up, we've been having a series on the kingdom. Hallelujah. Trying to understand the concept of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. Because we realize that from scripture, God did not give us a religion. God did not give us tradition. Hallelujah. He gave us a kingdom. The summary of the Bible is that a king, hallelujah, an eternal king who reigns, produced a colony of his kingdom. Remember the concept of the colony? Hallelujah. A subset of the mother kingdom. And he brought us to a point where we will rule and reign and sent us a representative of the kingdom the one who connects us with the reality of the mother kingdom we call him the governor of that kingdom he's the one we call the holy spirit and he's vested with the responsibility of teaching us empowering us training us making us to be citizens of that kingdom experientially hallelujah and helping us understand the constitution the modus operandi the values of the kingdom hallelujah and last week we spoke about the fact that or the week before last that Jesus didn't come primarily to take us to heaven hallelujah for we were designed to rule and reign in this earth realm Jesus primarily came to restore us to the life of the kingdom to grant unto us the keys of the kingdom that were collected from Adam hallelujah and then to connect us to the governor of that kingdom who will continue an extension of his ministry in our lives. Hallelujah. Then a day will come we will be translated for, from this realm so that the enemies of the kingdom will be judged. And after that judgment we will return with our king and we will reign in partnership. Hallelujah. Revelations ends with the beginning of a new dispensation. Where the citizens of the kingdom rule and reign with their king. Hallelujah. And I did teach us that the apex of citizenship is loyalty. Hallelujah. There is no true citizen of any kingdom who does not pay total allegiance and loyalty. In a democracy, everyone lives for himself or herself. 
Hallelujah. But in a kingdom system, every citizen lives for the king. And if at any point you were caught doing anything antagonistic to or trying to antagonize the values of the kingdom, you were termed what? A rebel. And so to help us understand that God didn't give us a religion. He gave us a life. He gave us a kingdom. When Jesus walked upon the earth, all his parables were linked to the kingdom. The kingdom is like unto this. The kingdom of God is like unto this. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. Hallelujah. And he gave us the keys to the kingdom. Access to rule and to reign. Hallelujah. And last week we considered Excuse me. Hallelujah. Last week we considered the fact that we need to advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. That we are on earth primarily to what? Advance the kingdom. You are not on earth just to go to school, get married, give birth to children, be the first person to build a nice house in your village or to buy a good jeep, grow old, write a book or two about yourself and die. No, there's more. Hallelujah. We are on earth to advance the kingdom. To extend the rulership, the influence. Hallelujah. Of the king. And then we spoke about the ways that we advance the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many of us remember? I taught us about four ways to advance or the methods according to God's word. That we advance the kingdom. Hallelujah spoke about the place of influence that we need to have kingdom influence we spoke about the place of prosperity according to Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a hallelujah how that the cities of God will be spread through prosperity we spoke about um, what did we speak about again character hallelujah how that we need to be men and women of character we are sick and tired of a generation of anointed people who do not have character Hallelujah. And then we mentioned six areas where the church has allowed Satan to capture and many believers are falling victims. We spoke about the family life. How many of us remember that the family is a vital place where the influence of the kingdom needs to be reached? Hallelujah. We spoke about the business world. We spoke about the media. We spoke about arts. Uh, Sports, hallelujah. I'm sure some of you will be happy we spoke about sports, hallelujah. Because there are some people who say, God, I will not leave sports, just anoint me to walk there, hallelujah. And today, very quickly, I want to talk about the lifestyle of the kingdom. Very briefly, I really want us to pray the lifestyle of the kingdom understood how to advance the kingdom we must know how to live as citizens of this kingdom how many of you are seeing your life changed by this series let me see your hands because if you really are not getting changed then we are not making any progress hallelujah that our lives be changed so that when they pick you at random and say my sister what do you understand about Christianity and the kingdom life you don't just say I'm a Christian and uh, are you born again? The person who says you are going to hell, and that's all. That you can let people know that God gave us a kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 10. While I was walking at home this afternoon, I had a vision and um, I saw different ladders, different kinds of ladders. They were painted in different colors and I saw us climbing these ladders. Others were helping others climb. Others were going up but they would come down deliberately. 
to help others climb and there was such activity and I was watching and I saw some people who were not climbing they were standing to supervise and ensure that others were climbing and then at a point when they were satisfied they would not climb like the other people they would just look up and find themselves up I believe in the spirit these were generals and I believe that this is what God is doing I believe God was encouraging me with this vision to let us know that we are making progress there, was, there were many um, activities around people were climbing others were trying to fall Others. one thing I saw that happen is that so many people were holding others and taking them again I think that was the greatest the most comforting part of that vision others would go far and then would want to fall and then somebody even those below would hold them and push them I saw this and that was all and God didn't tell me anything about it but I knew by the spirit that God was describing what was happening not just in Koinonia but in the church of God universal that God is helping us let me tell you friends we are rising are you listening to me we may be moving at different paces but you are making progress don't let Satan look at you and say are you really making progress don't compare yourself with anyone we are making progress when Noah built the ark the animals entered at different paces but they all entered the cheetah entered and the snail entered that's why we are patient to teach the word until the least person among us becomes as great as David hallelujah verse 38 of Hebrews chapter 10 thank you Jesus now the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him it says now the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith the lifestyle of the kingdom hear me is the lifestyle of faith are you listening to me the lifestyle of the kingdom is the lifestyle of faith that we come to a point where although we cannot see the king with our optical eyes although we cannot see the governor with our optical eyes we are absolutely convinced about their operation and we can partner with them hallelujah one of the biggest um, challenge for kingdom people is that we always want to see to believe how many of you know that saying seeing is believing say if I don't see it I cannot believe it now the lifestyle of the kingdom is such that the word of God becomes our eyes in the kingdom hallelujah the bible says the eye is the light of the body and then it also tells us that the entrance of this word gives light that means there is a possibility for the word to become your eyes in the kingdom hallelujah what do you need the eyes for in the physical realm you need the eyes to see and in that seeing you get direction hallelujah many of us need the eyes to be certain and to be convicted hallelujah as a kingdom citizen you must get to a point where the word of God becomes your eyes the Bible says why we look not at the things that are seen but so we can see things that are unseen he said but things that are unseen he said for the things that are seen are temporal the word temporal means subject to change but the things that are unseen are eternal hallelujah so when you become a citizen of the kingdom one of the things that the governor the holy spirit does is he helps you understand that the life of the kingdom is the life of faith absolute trust hear me absolute 100 percent trust in the word of god the integrity of his person hallelujah that you get to a point where you are totally governed by god's word you cease to walk by your sensory perceptions hallelujah because the strength of the flesh 
is your senses. Hallelujah. And for many people, we are happy only when good things happen around us. Hallelujah. You are encouraged that there is a God only when your optical eyes can see something nice. When you hear a good report. You see, we, we have been trained in a world where our convictions come primarily from the interaction of our senses with this realm. Are you following me now? And so when your parents get promoted, you are happy. And then you sing, you say, God, you are good, you are good, you are good. But when you begin to walk with the Holy Ghost, he begins to train you. And he trains you by causing you to lose confidence in your senses. He brings you to a point where you no longer trust your senses to give you the convictions. Hallelujah. He makes his word more superior to your sensory perception. And brings you to a point where you can hold on to his word. That his word becomes your reality. Are you following me now? And when that happens, your language will change. Because people speak according to what they see. Is that correct? When the word of God becomes your eyes, then the words that you speak will be consistent with what you are seeing. So that when men say there is a casting down, and you say there is a lifting up, people look at you and say, are you stupid? But then you tell them, I'm a citizen of a foreign kingdom. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Are you following me now? So faith is the lifestyle of the kingdom. Unfortunately, for many people, they have decided to pick certain aspects of the kingdom. And then for others, say faith is not necessary. Faith is for word of faith people and so on and so forth. Faith is the lifestyle of the kingdom. That our impulses in the kingdom are a derivative of what the word of God tells us. Are you following me now? Not what you are seeing. We have so many believers who go and yell at God. God, you are not faithful. God, you are not this. God, you are not that. But then you become a true citizen of the kingdom. When you see the things that happen around you these are things that can weigh you down but then as a citizen of the kingdom you arise there's no money at home and your parents are running helter skelter and you tell them we are blessed and they look at you and say we understand you these foolish children and you tell them no 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 I'm not trying to pretend it I'm not trying to convince myself I'm drawing forth from a reality based on what I have seen God's word and then you sing, you don't have to worry. I like that song. And don't you be afraid. Hallelujah. And while you're singing, people cannot understand. And you tell them, I hear in my spirit the abundance of rain. And while you are saying that, they just demote your father. And you say, I still hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And people say, now we understand this child is getting mad. And then you enter and shut the door. And they are waiting to hear you cry. And all they hear is, thank you, Jesus. You say, Lord, I thank you. I brace up. And your auntie doesn't have a child. And then she turns and she says, Lord, I thank you. Because I'm a mother of nations. And she goes to the market to buy baby clothes. And people say, now, oh, madam, is this embarrassment not enough? And then suddenly, the king of this kingdom sees true citizens of the kingdom let me tell you something friends do you know why the angels respect us so much they are compelled by the awe and the majesty of god that they see are you following me now you know for many of you i've had an encounter with jesus christ and um, when i saw him all i can remember is that i was a dead man on the floor i still don't know how his face looks like but I was seeing him and he just stretched forth his hands towards me and a beam of light the entrance of thy word give it light that was supernatural impartation 
directly by himself. Hallelujah. And I got up with a supernatural encounter that I've not recovered from till this day. And I'm not sure I'll recover forever. Hallelujah. So for many of us who say, God, I need to do a discussion with you. If I meet God, I will tell him this, I will tell him that. You think so? Brothers and sisters, if, you, if he's the real Jesus, you see. You will clap for yourself if you have the gods to at least look at him. And you will understand why Isaiah said, woe is me. The holiness and the majesty and the awe. So when he directs the angels, the angels find it an honor. They say it's an honor to serve the king. But then when the angels look at the earth realm, then they see one who has never seen a vision. You don't know how God looks like. Yet you, you were not born when the Bible was written. Yet you say, Lord, I believe. And the angels say, what is this? And even in the midst of challenges, you say, I believe. I believe. My voice is gone. I believe. Lord, I believe. And the angels wonder. And they say, what's going on? And you begin to speak and say, my life is blessed. Although you cannot see what is happening in the realm of the spirit, the word of God becomes your eyes. At that point, you become a true citizen of the kingdom. And hear me, friends, it takes a while. It takes a while for you to begin to live by faith. Don't let anybody make you feel bad. It takes a while. And let me tell you how God does it. He, beca he begins to dethrone everything that gives you strength and conviction outside his word until you are reduced with nothing but him. He tosses every other thing you trust aside from him not to work for you. And then you find out that you are left with only one option. And you say, yes, you are the king. I finally agree. Of kings because a time will come your intellect will be too crippled to continue the journey a time will come your money will be your connection and everything you know at that point you will begin to lose confidence in every other thing in your name. and he will make you so inadequate that if you ever take a step outside him you will feel like dying then you begin to sing Steve's song and I am desperate for you hallelujah he brings you to a point where he's not just your God he's your life that you know that if you ever take a step without him you are dead see it's not ordinary for you to love God so much that you can lose everything for him you must come it happens by an experiential revelation that he is your life God will test everything that you have that you exalt to be God there are many things that represent God in our lives for many people is money silver and gold for many people is charisma and fame and influence for many people is anointing for many people is ministry God is such a jealous God that you will dethrone everything. So every time you come into God's presence, as you fellowship with him, you know what is happening? There is a death process going on. It is a dethroning of everything. And then he keeps rising above the list until he gets to that point where he sits at the seat of your heart. At that point, nothing else moves you. The things of this world will seize their grip over your life hallelujah and there are many people who when it's time to worship god as you kneel down you just remember ah, i bought this thirty thousand. there's still a process of death that needs to go on in your life because you come to a point where you live totally based on his word can i tell you something most of the the sorrow and the the grief that many believers have is because they do not understand the faith life are you following me now a dead man cannot feel it even if you match him is that correct a dead man cannot feel it even if you insult him 
when you criticize a dead man what's his response many of us are so sensitive and overreactive and that's because we are still alive in ourselves we have not come to a point where the word of God becomes our life are you listening to me when you get to that point no matter how attractive a thing is if it is not you get to a point in your life where if it is not consistent with God's word I am not ready let me ask you a question how many of you can truly say right now inside and outside that you have gotten to a point in your life where you can say if the word of God does not lead me I'm not ready to move how many of you here can come to a point where you say every success I don't care how attractive it is if it is not founded on the word of God I'm not interested there are many of us praying and trusting God I'm a millionaire the day even if it's Satan that waves five naira that's how you follow you say God will settle it later on but the faith life is the life that is absolutely tied on the word of God hallelujah that my joy my satisfaction my fulfillment is a perfect derivative of God's word I find no other satisfaction outside his word his word represents my fulfillment I believe his word you are not a believer because you just came out for altar call you are a believer because you have come to a point where the word of God is king over your life I believe every truth in God's word I will die believing it if I never experience anything that looks like success in my life I've said it here and here again God forbid but if I die of sickness the last word that will come out from my mouth before I die is by his stripes I am healed I have come to a point where I don't believe God's word because of the result it will produce I don't have any other option even if the word of God never produces a result if God tells me now Josh the whole concept of heaven it was just my way of making you love me I said God no problem I have so long as I will be with you if you will be in hell that's where I want to be I come to a point where my life is governed by the word of God hear me friends this is the secret of success that many believers fail to live by and they get whipped and punished again and again you must get to a point where the word of God becomes the governing factor of your life please hear me inside and outside and take seriously what I'm saying the kingdom life is a faith life the prosperity the success the increase and the fulfillment of a believer is tied to the voice of God and the word of God Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 it says if thou will um, diligently hearken also to the voice of God he said it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commands which I commanded this day he said that the Lord will the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the earth verse 2 and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken we have a bunch of stubborn believers that don't know how to obey the principles of their king hear me friends God created this universe he has put a principle to govern your life it's one definition of foolishness to live outside the word of God we try to live outside God's word and we want the blessings that are in the word hallelujah a true citizen of the kingdom is number one one who is loyal to the king but number two one who makes the word of God his priority 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 it's not the issue of being spiritual or not it's your life he said my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings he said do not let them depart from your heart 
keep them in the midst of your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart he said they are life to those who find them you program yourself to be a victor and a success in life when you allow the word of god govern every step of your life we are where we are by the grace of god simply because we have inclined ourselves to hear the voice of god i will do nothing in my life without the voice of god i will do nothing i will go nowhere i cherish his voice and i cherish his word because his word and his voice are one the word of god is my life the word of god is my life everything the word of god says not to do i will not do it i will not try it and see what happens i'm not ready hallelujah the bible says for you to be a tither it says that's the way the heavens are open there's no point arguing people argue and say this and that and they are chopping our money in the church and so on and so forth and then they remain poor they remain broke and they get angry at those who are prospering that's the point if you refuse to obey god's word you will always feel angry at those who are obeying it hallelujah and then the bible says god gives grace to the humble he said you are peace the proud when i find this in the word i align my life by the spirit and then you begin to see unending grace i mean unending inexplainable grace dimensions of grace that even you the career cannot explain hallelujah he said if you be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land see hear me friends you must take this word seriously search the scriptures you are not trying to be spiritual by doing it it's your life hallelujah i believe god's word i believe what god's word says about me this is my life this is the constitution of my life i'm not doing it because i have a responsibility in ministry to prepare a message no it's my life can you get to that point where you are totally governed by the word of god if you tell me to drink and smoke i will not just tell you no if i tell you no that's not enough i will tell you no because it is against the constitution of my kingdom are you following me now if someone comes to meet me and say josh let's compromise the way of god i'll tell him no i am bounded by the word of god i put my life on the line and i tell you the truth friends i have tested it i can tell you this word works this word works you see peter said that which we have seen that which we have heard he said that which our hands have handled these are the things that we speak i have one guarantee it may not come as fast as you want but if you stay with this word it will build an enviable future for you every other factor notwithstanding hear me there is no challenge you want to face in this life or you are facing now that someone has not faced a worse one people have come out of unimaginable challenges to emerge gloriously in life there's none of us here that has an excuse so why do so many believers experience weakness and setbacks in their lives although they are called kings i'll tell you why it's not because they are not filled with the holy ghost it's not because they don't have a bible it's not because they don't come to church they have not come to a point where beyond church and religion are you listening to me i don't separate my personal life my spiritual life as it were everything is centered around the word whatever i'm doing with you that is not directly linked to the word i'm not interested call me a fanatic but i'll still be successful and you will need me badly hallelujah are you following me so in the kingdom life we must come to a point where you see friends you hear us talk about this word of god thing this word of god thing take it seriously we have seen some of our fathers who kept this word and in their old age they proved everything that scripture a man tell osborne he lived the prosperity of the scripture 
He healed the sick. He casted out devils. He raised the dead. He has fulfilled every mandate that my eyes can see that God said a citizen should fulfill. Hmm. Humorously, Jimmy keeps saying it that he must do everything the Bible says we should do before he goes to be with the Lord. He has healed the sick. He has casted out devils. I think he's just remaining the dead. Hallelujah. And he challenges himself every time. I remember one time I went to pray for a dead man who was dead three days. Hallelujah. And we went to the uh, faculty of medicine. And they said I should come. And I went in. And I saw all kinds of dead men. I said, where is he? Where is the one I'm supposed to pray on? And then they led me to the dead man. And when I looked at him, three days dead, you better have faith. You, or at least you better know God. You have to believe in something in that. And I laid my hands on him. Called for the spirit, prayed. I did it three times. When he didn't wake up, I told the people, get me out of this place. Get me out of this place. Remember my saying, I'm not Jesus Christ. I didn't die for anybody's sins. I didn't collect money from everybody. In everything, God is still glorified. And I encourage the people. I told them, make plans for the burial. Jesus is Lord. We who are alive should press into God and love him more. How about that? Now, you may laugh at me, but the next time I go to pray for a dead body, for many of you, your first challenge will be to look at one. If you will ever raise a dead man, you have to stand before one. From faith to faith. Hallelujah. So God keeps training your faith. Can I tell you something, friends? You must stop complaining and shouting. Change your perception over situations and circumstances. Are you following me? I was born by this. I see every situation and challenge that comes as an opportunity to be schooled in faith. To become a better citizen of the kingdom. And that's why I, I never, never get angry and offended now. I know it sounds like I'm very, very serious about what I'm saying. To come to a point where I'm depressed. He said, Josh, what's wrong? I said, Kai, man, this kingdom thing. I know that God is a good God and I know that his word is true he reigns he reigns help me worship us my voice is gone he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass to bring his word to pass he reigns he reigns Lord, he reigns he reigns our God time we spend on movies staying on the word if we spend half the time we spend going from pillar to post to beg uncles and aunties on the word am I challenging you if we spend half the time looking for connection this and that and that I've told you this thing in this place and I'll say it again take your eyes off men they will disappoint you again and again and again the best of every man is still a man oh but I know one who can be trusted I know one who can be trusted he said by this time tomorrow Kabo Satabaya only God can make that audacious statement and look at your life and say by this time by this time mercy prosper Nigeria will be celebrating you by this time the world will begin to come to pass only God can make that kind of statement well can I tell you something the Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants the secrets of the Lord are not with everybody they are not with every Christian they are with them that fear him another word there is them that are serious with him you can't be one leg in here, one leg out. Lord, I love you, things are working. Lord, I hate you, things are not working. You must come to a point where you say, if I perish, I perish. That you hold on to God's word. I never allow myself to speak anything outside God's word. No one will preach me into that thing. I 
will never call myself a failure because God's word never called me a failure. This is the principle of the kingdom. Are you following me now? I am not weak and beggarly. I am everything the word of God says I am. But how can you walk in light of a truth you do not know? And how will you know it until you search it out? There are many of us who don't even have Bibles. You have all kinds of dictionary. You have 48 laws of power. 96 laws of increase. 25 laws of victory. And you don't have a Bible. I, am, I guarantee you, you are not yet successful. Or when the fire burnt it to one side. And then it starts from Matthew chapter 5. And then we pride in these things. And then you hold your Bible and chuck it at the side of your pocket. Hmm. They are life to those who find them. And help to their flesh. You see this Bible? Forget how ugly and old it looks. There is life. I'm sucking out the life in this Bible. I believe it with all of my heart. There is nothing this world cannot do for you. There is no problem. Hear me. It always looks impossible until you see the result that the word of God brings. It always looks impossible. Is it a job? Is it debt? Is it financial hardship? Is it your life? Is it sickness and disease? I am confident. Let, let eternity prove me wrong. But I am confident that this is the believer's way of life. Oh, I believe the word. The word of God tells me that Jesus Christ left the Holy Spirit to school me and to build me. I am confident I have the Holy Spirit. I'm confident. My confidence is not because I'm praying in tongues. My confidence is because the word of God says so. I like a beautiful song that um, for many of us those of us who had the privilege of attending Sunday school. Some of us didn't attend. You always run away. They say, come on Sunday school. That's where you go and cause trouble. You scratch people's car. You paint things. You steal money. You buy ice cream with your offering. It says, Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? It didn't say because I'm a male or a female. For the Bible tells me so. For can you come to a point in your life where your confidence in life is because the word of God says so I believe God's word I believe God's word the word of God is the basis of my life I walk by the word I talk the word I live the word I act the word I truly believe this word I'm not saying it because I'm preaching I truly believe the word of God that's why I invest in the word. That's why I invest in the word. For many of you, all you have is free our daily manner that they share during one conference. You will never, how come we don't invest in the things of the kingdom? Hallelujah. We buy clothes, we buy Gucci shoes, and everything. And we pride. Let me tell you, you are an insecure man if all that you have is suit and money and cars and all of these things. The word of God. Show me a man that has nothing in this life but God's word. I show you one who the world will celebrate. But show me a, one, a man that that's why I don't envy any unbeliever. I don't care what he has. They are standing on slippery ground. The recession has shown us people woke up overnight and became poor and broke. The world millionaires. No, I'm not ready for that kind of life. I need a life that is founded upon the rock. Hallelujah. Can you reduce the key? Let me sing a very beautiful song. Some of us who came from Orthodox, it's time for you to appreciate me. Hallelujah. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not try That's a powerful song. sweetest rain but only on, on Christ the solid on Christ the solid every other ground is truly sinking sand no matter how sure it looks it's sinking sand all other ground is 
sinking sand. Hallelujah. Every other ground. There are many grounds. Grounds of connection. Grounds of money. Grounds of I know this, I know that. Grounds of intellect. I'm telling you the truth. They are sinking. Many people are suffering and languishing and getting disappointed that after all of their education and their strength in themselves, it still looks like Satan is still above them. But the true citizen of the kingdom is one who cherishes the words of the king. Knowing that the king is a loving king and he will not tell you what to destroy you. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for five minutes and then you sit down. And then I'll finish up. Just hold your Bible and we're going to pray in tongues. If you truly came with one, hold your Bible. You want to embrace it, embrace it. We are going to pray in tongues for five minutes. That God, you impart a desire for your word. Go ahead and pray. Please make sure this is not a time to pinch and look at your neighbor. Take it seriously. This is a training. I believe your word. I have no other option. Come on, pray in the spirit. That's why you came. Inside and outside. Inside and outside. Your word is my guiding light. Your word is my life. I live by your principles. No compromise. Pray in the spirit. Patali Malabado, Secretary Brigadier, Alabada, and the Monda, She Patali Bacatali Brigadier, Secretary, She Posa Cata, E Palamon, hold your Bible, Malik, hold your Bible, Malik, hold your Bible, hold your Bible, pray in the spirit, E Patan, Shaka, Lenche, Potoba, Sadana, I take your word seriously. I take your word seriously. I'm a doer of the word. I take your word seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be seated. When you get to that point in your life, where you respect God's word. Where you value God's word. He said, how amiable are your laws. They are my meditation all day long. Buy an mp3. Buy an ipod. Stuff your phone with the word of God. Messages that teach you the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Get worship songs. Lie down in your room and saturate yourself. Faith is coming into your spirit as you hear. You may lie down in a little room with nothing to eat, but there is an investment. You are becoming a true citizen of the kingdom. And you keep pressing in the spirit from day one to day two to day three. One day you will step into the seventh day and it will you cannot even stop the cycle of victory and success that will begin to follow you. We have a lot of believers lazy at the word. Oh, pray for me. Pray for that. Especially in the south. That's why they like prophets. As an antidote to their laziness. People who will not stay with God's word. Let me tell you something. There are some things that even one gallon of olive oil will not do for you. You've got to stay in God's word. Are you listening to me? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell in you. So let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs can you get to that point in your life where you live by the word where you talk by the word your friend comes to meet you and say how is the struggle now and you tell him no um, I appreciate you but God is working I belong to a kingdom and that kingdom has an economic system every opportunity you have you are talking about the kingdom what are the consequences men will insult you men will call you a fanatic so what about it hallelujah many of you will break out of certain associations you cherish on account of your seriousness with God love is a command in the Bible there is no command that you must relate with everybody the Bible says what fellowship has light got to do with darkness with right, light got to do with darkness and what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness hallelujah you come to a point where you get serious can we get to that point where everyone who attends koinonia is serious with the word of God I don't mean this hypocritical seriousness that we just do when we are looking for something Christ Christianity that there's, there's a situation at hand and then everybody becomes serious no it must become your life how serious are you with the principles of God's word the Bible talks about tithing for instance how many of you are truly committed to tithing? Ah, God understands. Let me tell you something. God will not change his rules because of you. He didn't change it because of Jesus Christ. He will not change it because of you. The wages of sin is death. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Jesus died. At his death, he cried and said, Eloi, Eloi, la sabachthani. The father still didn't change his mind. Let me tell you something. If you think you keep violating God's word and get away with it, can I tell you something? A time will come you will face a bitter, not because God will punish you. It will be the consequences of obeying his, disobeying his principles. Hallelujah. Speaking the word, for instance, for many of us, we feel that it's not an important thing. And we feel embarrassed speaking the word. Just say, okay, this thing makes people like children. This coin on yourself. How can a mature person just be jumping and be saying, I am this, I am that. But when you are in trouble, you talk about it. Is it not with your mouth you use and confess it? You keep talking. You tell everybody from Pilot, I am in trouble. I am in trouble. Why can't you speak and say, I am victorious? So says the word of God. You mustn't have a special prayer time. You can be on your way. You can be in your job and you say in the name of Jesus, the word of God works in me. The word of God is producing the character of the kingdom in me. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? The word of God gives us boundaries as believers. Hallelujah. And so that we live by the principle of faith. See, faith is our concept of faith. I thank God God is helping us. Because for many believers, our concept of faith has just been a spiritual operation used to receive things. That's the general concept of faith that is taught in church. But I'm teaching you today that faith is a way of life. Are you following me now? For many of us, we think faith is only an operation when you need to receive something. No faith is your way of life faith is the way of life that is governed by the word of God and the voice of God governed by the principles of the kingdom God is speaking to us this night that if we seriously want to become citizens of the kingdom take God's word seriously Job the richest man in the east gave us a blueprint of his success he said in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle the bible called him the richest man in the east he was so blessed he had children he had everything that represented success david tells us his secret a man who loved god and had everything life could offer he said create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me he said cast me not away from your presence it was david that said how amiable are your laws O lord 
they are my meditation all day long. He said, as the deer pants after the water book, so my soul pants after you. Hallelujah. I bring to you a very simple but life-changing teaching tonight that you must come to a point where the word of God becomes your principle of operation. No matter what is happening around me, if the word of God tells me otherwise, I choose God's word. Are you listening to me? I don't need to wear an expensive shoe to know God is faithful. The word of God tells me already that his name is faithful and true. Are you listening to me? I believe God's word. God is asking us a question and it's not a general question. God is asking you. God is asking you. Do you believe my word enough? I be in your fashion uh, design school and whatever. Do you believe God's word? Do you believe God's word? God is asking a serious question. Do a believer is not just one who has gotten born again. A believer is one who has come to a point where his entire life revolves around the world. Has nothing to do with the church you attend. Has nothing to do your, with your denomination. This is the secret of life. I was told a humorous story about a man, a very wealthy man, who had some very stubborn children. And there was this young boy among them. And he wrote his will, and you know, just shared so many things. And then, when he was about to die, he called the son. And he said, son, come. And he said, I'm about to die. And he brought out a brand new Bible. And he gave it to the son. He said, this is what I will give you. It will make you a champion. And it will change your life. And then the father died. And the child threw the Bible away. And tried to make it on his own. The child suffered so much until he, I mean he suffered so much and then one day in his frustration after hitting himself from pillar to post he came to a point where he decided to pick up the Bible at least just to look at it and when he opened the Bible he was just reading, reading he wasn't even getting the point and then mistakenly he turned to the last page of the Bible and he saw a check that his father left and the father said if he takes the Bible seriously then he should see that check and if he sees the check that was all his inheritance and from this story it was a true story someone was sharing it's something that happened i heard a preacher and when he saw it he broke down and he cried because for years the father deliberately put the check at the last page of the bible and said there is no how he can take this bible seriously without at least turning to the last page to see. And while this guy was suffering, the empires of his father were being occupied by banks and financial institutions because nobody could claim them. And here was the inheritance that the father left with him. Do you know that applies to many of us? We have been running and crying over what the word of God can give us. As kingdom citizens, we must come to a point where we separate ourselves and stay with the word. What challenge are you going through in life? What area of life is not working for you? Have you ever taken out time to stay with God's word? Diligent study with God's word. And in the place of prayer. And watch the hand of the Lord transform your life. God is bringing this word tonight. To draw us back to the place of the word. That as citizens of the kingdom, as ordinary as this book looks, it contains the values of the kingdom. And if you take it seriously and then respect the governor of that kingdom, how come we respect men more than God? If I walk to you now and I tell you, come and collect a check of 5 million naira tomorrow, you will be so glad. And you even announce to your friends, you say, I have hammered. But how come the word of God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said God. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and a hope. And many times we turn to God and shout and yell and insult and say, God, you are not faithful. Can you let the word of God become your eyes tonight? 
you say lord i believe your word i choose to believe your word i'm not just believing your word because of the result it will produce i have come to a point where your word is life and i live by the operation of the word of god is what the bible calls faith faith is not necessarily about receiving faith is about living according to the word of god and we are going to pray and i really want us to pray and say god for many of us we need to pray and say lord please let there be a baptism of a desire for your word a desire for your word for many of us morning till night you are visiting friends everybody oh visit this visit that visit that can you stay with god's word and take god's word seriously i don't just mean opening the bible and putting it on your chest and sleeping till night i mean being alert wake up study god's word pray it into your life believe the principles and constrain your life to live by it i have one guarantee you will emerge a success you will emerge victorious and we are going to pray we have one simple desire that the word of God will put that the Holy Ghost will put a desire for intimacy with him and for his word in our lives are you listening to me bigger than ministry that we begin to live like true citizens of the kingdom so that you don't come to a point where you say something and people turn and say sorry are you born again for many of us tonight you came for koinonia but God is asking you, when will you be serious with my ways? The Bible said he showed Israel his acts. But to Moses, he showed Moses his ways. You know what his ways are? His principles. If I give you 1,000 naira, you will still need me to get it tomorrow. If I show you how I got it, you will be able to get it whether or not I'm there. He showed the Israelites wanted his acts. You know what we are teaching here by the grace of God? The ways of God. It's not just enough for you to see power and anointing but it's for you to also understand the operation of the spirit so that you begin to command perpetual victory in your life hallelujah and so we are going to pray in the next 10 minutes i don't know how you are going to cry to god you want to lie down you want to now it's not the time to pinch people and just smile as that was the message you I can ask that after the program hallelujah now is the time to rise up rise up on your feet everyone please can we inside and outside we are going to raise a cry and say Lord I take your word and your ways seriously 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 I stake my life at your word I believe your word I'm a doer a doer of that word lift up your voice and begin to pray le baba kapra kata baba baba the lifestyle of the kingdom is the lifestyle of faith the lifestyle of the word speaking the word doing the word living the word knowing the word the word of god is all i know of our fathers lived it their lives have become an epistle for us to follow the bible says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise through faith staking their lives they encountered impossible situations yet the word of god brought them out lift up your voice and begin to pray oh i take your word seriously it's my life hallelujah it's my life inside and outside say lord i take your word seriously Raka ba 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 they are life to those who find them they are life if you care to find it it will be life to you and health is a secret of divine health is a secret of divine protection it's the secret of increase the secret of favor the word of god living in me living in me come on pray Raka ba 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 sataya Lembra ta ka ta vrege de bala de bosh Raka ba 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 I take your word seriously 
I take your word seriously. No matter what happens to me, go ahead and pray. I refuse to look at the things that are seen. I refuse to look at the sickness in my body. I refuse to look at the challenge in my family. I look at your word. Come on, go ahead and pray. God is faithful by whom we were called into the fellowship of his son. God is faithful. He will not lie by these two immutable things. It is impossible for God to lie. The just shall live by faith, by the operation of God's word. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the endless expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God living by the word will make you a champion living by the word will make you the head and not the tail I'm not just talking about climbing scriptures talk the word live the word speak the word obey the word totally 100% obedience come on obtain grace obtain grace obtain grace come boldly before the throne of grace come boldly don't come with timidity you are washed in the blood of the son of God you are holy you are pure you are righteous say Lord I receive grace I receive this inside and outside make sure you're praying grace to live by the word no matter what I see no matter what I feel no matter what the doctors are saying no matter what the economy is saying no matter what situations and circumstances are saying I live by the word I live by the word Sheba Bayeda I live by the word dedicate your life commit yourself to the practice of the word say Lord grace grace to stay with the word grace to be a student of the word grace who are down mountain before Zerubbabel before Zerubbabel thou shalt be made plain at the shout of grace at the shout of grace at the shout of grace go ahead and declare grace to be a doer of the word grace to let the word of God become your eyes go ahead and pray say the word becomes my eyes my perception is based on the word my response to life is based on the word my reaction is based on the word my convictions are based on the word my confidence is based on the word i believe the word i respect the word i live by the values of the word heaven and earth shall pass away but my word abided forever. Hallelujah. You are truly not a citizen of the kingdom until you begin to live by the word. Jesus said to Satan, said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Bread there is a prophetic symbolism of your sensory perception. He said, but by every word, man can live by every word. I live by his every word. His every word for my health. His every word for my finances. His every word for this ministry. His every word for all that concerns me. I believe his word that his thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil I know I have a blessed tomorrow I know my tomorrow is greater than my today hallelujah hold the hands of someone pair yourselves into two as we take this next prayer point
please take it seriously you're going to speak i like you to take it seriously instrumentalist i like you to follow us as we pray hallelujah you're going to begin to speak god's word into that person's life and say in the name of jesus every blessing i know the word of god says keep speaking the blessing over their health over their finances go ahead and pray take it seriously you shall not die but live you are healthy you are strong you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the country you are above pray pray you are the head and not the tail you are victorious in this life you are more than a conqueror you come out of every predicament you come out of every challenge go weeping and doors for a night but joy 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 comes to the morning joy go weeping and doors for the night joy pray for your neighbor call him the head call him the best call him anointed call him victorious the word of god will bring you out of that sickness will bring you out of that failure will bring you out of that tragedy release grace prophesy grace prophesy grace to your neighbor grace to live by the word grace to obey the spirit of god grace to respect the values of the kingdom speak over their families your family is coming out of every challenge yes they may have cried they are coming out they are coming out they are coming out by the word of god out of that financial situation they are coming out jesus will be glorified in your life jesus will be glorified you are lifted you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed you are blessed from glory to glory grace to grace power to power increase to increase victory to victory grace to say no to sin grace to say no to satan grace to say no to every deceitful practice of the flesh grace to say no to every way that is not of god no matter how accepted it is by society grace to ride against the existing status quo inside and outside the lord is standing where you are praying take it seriously grace grace hallelujah 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 very quickly just in one or two minutes the lord just instructed me for us to do this hallelujah you're going to speak the word grace upon your life are you listening to me that's what god says i should tell them he said tell them to release grace upon themselves i know that many of us do not understand the power of grace see the grace of god can do for you what you will not be able to do all your life the grace of god will make your life sweatless i'm telling you it's the grace of god that can say you sleep in the prison today and wake up as a prime minister tomorrow it's the grace of god that took hadassah from a hamlet and made her queen the grace of god made daniel to reign through the dispensation of three kings go ahead and prophesy grace upon yourself take it seriously grace 
at the shout of grace 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 over my finances over my life higher grace the grace of God exalting me my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I'm anointed with fresh oil my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn grace I shout it grace the unmerited favor the unmerited favor Lord according to your instruction we are shouting grace grace over your family grace over your body the Bible says who are down mountain before Zerubbabel grace hallelujah hallelujah for many of you who can turn we are rounding up Zechariah chapter 4 we are citizens of the kingdom we are not ordinary we know the laws of the kingdom Zechariah chapter 4 if you can project it that would be great Zechariah chapter 4 Verse 6. Zechariah 4 verse 6. If you are there, say amen. amen. Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by power, nor by might. Hmm. He said, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord God of hosts. Verse 7. Who art thou, O great mountain? He said, Before Zerubbabel, before Joshua Selman, they go here. He said, Who art thou, O great mountain? He said, Before Joshua Selman, thou shalt become a plain. Hear me. Listen. He said, And ye shall bring forth the headstone thereof with the shoutings of grace grace hallelujah I hope that we'll have time and then another time we'll talk on the grace of God we're out of time but I want you to go back home see hear me before you sleep tonight I'd like you to take even if it's just five minutes and shout this grace upon your life beyond your ability Covering for your inadequacies. The unmerited favor and access that the Lord gives a man. He said, Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. He didn't give us a reason. Grace. Hallelujah.